Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Strategic Project Management Webinar, organized by Informa and delivered by Howard Rom, President and CEO of the Strategy Management Group and Balance Scorecard Institute, and Wes Balakian, Senior Associate and Project Management Senior Consultant. The webinar will be recorded and will be sent to you within a week. We will take questions at the end of the webinar, so please feel free to type them in the question box as you think of them. Over to you, Howard and Wes. Thank you and welcome, everybody. This presentation is uh, based on uh, a number of observations that uh, we've had uh, over the years, and I want to list those first, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we've seen that many organizations have a gap between strategy and implementation, that is between the development of the strategy and the execution of the strategy. Um, understanding the gap and how to bridge it can help improve organization performance. Project managers uh, can make a unique contribution to bridging that gap, and doing so can be a very good career move for them. And finally, the gap can be reduced if current project managers adopt a more strategic view of what they do and organization leaders create a high performance culture and supporting governance and organization structures to enable success. Uh, so it's a two way street. We need uh, project managers, uh, many of whom already think strategically uh, to, uh, to, to uh, create a more strategic environment uh, for them to operate. And we need the leaders uh, in the organization to uh, to follow through and create uh, the enabling uh, governance and structures to be able to uh, to succeed. Um, we're often struck when we uh, visit organizations about the difference when we're talking with uh, folks at the strategy level and folks at the project management level. Uh, sometimes it seems uh, literally like uh, never the twain shall meet. So let's talk a little bit about the gap between strategy development and strategy execution, <clears throat> and then we'll get into uh, what uh, project managers uh, can do to, um, uh, to be more strategic. So we're going to define strategy execution as uh, implementing the organization strategy uh, by leading and communicating effectively in a climate of teamwork, continuous improvement, innovation, and change. And we like to think of it as uh, uh, building a bridge, literally, between those two, uh, those two uh, different um, components of uh, performance management, the strategy development side on the left and strategy implementation on the right. In many organizations, there's a gap. <clears throat> and uh, we've looked uh, hard over the 200 some organizations that uh, we have worked with to try and understand that better. And basically, we've observed that there are four uh, major gap areas. Uh, one is around uh, communications. Uh, many organizations do not communicate uh, strategy very effectively when it gets down to the uh, business units and the support units, the operations uh, part of the business. Um, we've noticed that uh, the language at strategy and the tools that we use when we develop strategy and do strategic planning uh, are different than the language and tools that uh, project managers use as they uh, implement uh, uh, implement the strategy. Second category is unaligned people, processes, and systems. Uh, we see this uh, a lot in organizations around the world, where folks tend to be somewhat stove stovepiped in uh, in what they do and when they uh, run their uh, operating departments, and there's not good alignment. Uh, within departments many times and uh, for sure across department, across uh, business units and support units. Um, ineffective governance and organizational structure uh, is another one. Uh, the roles and the responsibilities, who's responsible for what, how an organization organizes for strategy management and how it organizes for project management. Uh, many times uh, those uh, don't exist uh, at all. There are no offices for that. The, folks are sort of left to their own devices to manage the project somewhat in the abstract. And finally, we see a, a mismatch between the human capital capabilities and capacities, uh, skills gaps in the 
wrong people in the uh, in the wrong job. So those are the four major gap categories. Um, what we're sharing with you today is uh, part of a new course that we have developed that uh, Wes is going to be teaching in Dubai in uh, a couple of weeks in uh, March. It's called Strategic Project Management Professional Certification. Um, we will jointly certify with our partner, uh, the uh, Center for Excellence in Public Leadership at the George Washington University, part of their College of Professional Studies. Uh, Wes will be bringing uh, his uh, long knowledge of, uh, from the Project Management Institute uh, as uh, part of the, uh, of the uh, course uh, teachings. It's a three-day course. And uh, thank you, Informa, for uh, offering a, a very nice uh, discount for folks who are sitting through this uh, webinar and uh, can register using the discount code uh, webinar 200. And we'll show that code again at the, uh, at the end of the session. Uh, I'm Howard Raum, and uh, my co-presenter is uh, Wes Balakian. Uh, between us, uh, we have uh, probably 60 years of experience or more in, uh, on the strategy side of uh, performance uh, management, project management, and on the uh, project management side of performance management and project management. Um, <clears throat> we've been doing this for about uh, 20 years. We've trained about 18,000 delegates. Uh, from somewhere over uh, 80 countries, and uh, we are one of uh, two organizations in the world that have the dual certifications from the Association for Strategic Planning and the Project Management Institute. We're registered education providers for, for both of those folks. Um, we teach and train in uh, Arabic and French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Vietnamese, and uh, we have, uh, this is our passion. We do both the uh, training and the uh, consulting to help organizations become more uh, high performance. That's our passion. All right, so what's a project manager? Uh, one who contributes to corporate strategy, to the discussions, to the deliberations, uh, someone who manages projects with an eye towards strategy. What are we trying to accomplish? Uh, a person uh, who starts with the end in mind. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Someone who puts individual projects in the context of organization performance, the so-called greater good. Someone who coordinates results across department boundaries, business and support units, and a person who understands uh, strategy execution. So let's go back to our uh, bridge between strategy development and strategy implementation and look at what we call the strategy execution imperatives. If we think back to those four gap categories that we showed in an earlier version of this slide, uh, what do we do about it? How do we organize uh, an approach to deal effectively and eliminate the gap or reduce the gap so we can, in fact, uh, do a better job of strategy implementation or execution? So the first uh, imperative is engaged leadership. Uh, this does not just mean um, leaders in the C-suite. One of the uh, things that we have observed over uh, over the last 20 years is that the ideal organizations, the high-performance organization, create leaders at multiple levels in the organization. As a matter of fact, uh, a tip here, if you're building a management system, uh, make sure that you do it with uh, the different voices from the organization, not just the senior leadership team. The uh, management systems that we've seen stand the test of time, the ones that are most sustainable uh, are the ones where uh, you look at the change management aspects of leadership as well as the technical parts of the management system. So engaged leadership is a key part of this because those are the folks who are going to create the governance and uh, lead the, uh, the culture change that's the transformation that goes on in organizations and, and provide the enabling uh, basis for uh, for success, so important uh, imperative. Um, on the uh, left, operationalizing strategy. A lot of organizations will end up with a very well-written strategic plan uh, that ends up sitting on the shelf. It has not been turned into uh, operational uh, uh, strategic plans, so that's a key imperative. Um, another one is the language and tools gap. I mentioned that 
a little bit earlier. Uh, we just uh, talk different languages when we talk with strategy folks and when we talk with uh, project management folks. So how do we bridge the gap between uh, the tools that we use in those two areas and the language that we use? Um, supported innovation and uh, change culture uh, goes back to engage leadership, but also involves how we set up a management office, a strategy a management office, or a project management office. What, what are the roles, the responsibilities? What are the resources that we give folks in those offices? How do we report performance? Uh, how do we uh, aggregate it? How do we organize it? And so on. Capacity, capabilities, and uh, governance. Uh, again, uh, dealing with the, what we see as uh, many times a skills mismatch uh, with uh, what we're trying to accomplish and the folks who are, who are uh, charged with uh, accomplishing uh, results. Um, strategic project management is what we're going to talk uh, more about here in just a minute. And then finally, the one in the middle, uh, better alignment between people, processes, and systems. So these are the imperatives that we have identified over the course of uh, the 20 years that we have been uh, working with the uh, uh, Balanced Scorecard Institute and the Strategy Management Group. Um, there's a feedback loop, right? That's the learning and growth piece of this. When we learn uh, from successes on the strategy implementation side and then feed those back into strategy development during the next uh, planning cycle. Uh, we could spend uh, probably a couple of webinars on these imperatives, and we only have a little time today, so we're going to focus on uh, three of them. Uh, strategic project management, operationalizing strategy, and then bridging the language and tools gap. One overarching principle that we have found uh, works really well to get organizations thinking uh, in the right way about this is to adopt the mindset uh, from uh, Stephen Covey uh, to start with the uh, end in mind, one of his uh, habits of uh, highly successful uh, people. Uh, and I really like this uh, quote, uh, people and their managers are working so hard to be sure things are done right that they hardly have time to decide if they're doing the right things. Strategy development is uh, about doing the right things, about looking at scenarios, about making choices, uh, and doing things right is, is keeping the trains running on time, the operating side of the business. And uh, we're looking for balance when we uh, go into an organization to help uh, create higher performance. We need to have a balance on the strategy side and on the operation side. So what are a couple of questions that you can use to uh, get started in the right direction with this? Uh, the first one is to ask yourself, what are we trying to accomplish? So many times in organizations, the conversation seems to start around what are we doing? Uh, like, um, uh, like somehow that's a strategic uh, discussion, and it's just not. I mean, you have to uh, back up. Uh, you have to ask yourself, you know, the higher altitude question. What are we really trying to accomplish uh, in this organization? <clears throat> we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. And the second question is, once we've, we've got our, our hands around accomplishments, you know, how will we know success when we see it? Right? That's, the, that's the performance measurement question. The question is not, what should we measure? The question should be, how will we know success when we see it? And then the next question would be, you know, what are the outcome measures, the output measures, the process measures, the input measures that will support our understanding of success and progress towards success? Uh, and then finally, what are the operational strategic projects that are important to what we're trying to accomplish? Uh, most folks don't, uh, don't think like this, we've observed. There's a sort of a rush to judgment to talk about the current projects that we're working on. You know, there's a rush to judgment to get a piece of software that uh, is a promise to uh, make uh, make your job easier. Uh, we haven't found that those are very effective, not at the start. Uh, they come later, but uh, make sure you take time to ask the, the strategy questions uh, first. Uh, to do it well, you need to have some sort of a framework to look at these questions and put them in, uh, put projects in the context of that, uh, the bigger picture. So let's look at uh, one of the imperatives, operationalized uh, strategy. 
<clears throat> strategy is a bridge uh, between high altitude, the successful future, the mission, the core values of the organization, and what the business and support uh, units do at the more operational levels, the day-to-day -day activities that implement the strategy. So uh, strategy is a path and a plan uh, for, for getting to a successful future. And most importantly, when you think about aligning the organization, uh, taking it down to the level of uh, teams and individuals, you know, folks at the uh, at the level of the shop floor, the desktop, you know, have a very basic question that needs to be answered and that we as leaders need to address. How do I fit in and how does what I do matter? So the, you know, one, of, one of the big benefits of thinking strategically is that you get to uh, answer the questions at different levels uh, right down to the desktop and to the shop floor and show people how they align uh, to the mission and vision of the organization through strategy. So at each of these different levels, we're going to talk about project management in a slightly different way. When we're at the strategy level, we're going to talk about strategic initiatives. Uh, they're still projects, but we differentiate them from operational projects by calling them strategic initiatives. Operational projects are at the business and support unit level, the operational level, and then when we get down to teams and individuals, it's usually projects, activities, and tasks. Uh, so the language changes, and we have to understand those uh, those differences. There's a lot of different tools that you can use on the strategy side. Uh, uh, Blue Ocean and Porter's Five Forces, OKRs. I've only listed a few of them here. Uh, strategy Profiles, if you haven't used that tool, it's very powerful. Uh, of course, we have been very active in the balanced scorecard for uh, the last uh, 20 years, uh, building out a framework for helping organizations uh, understand strategy through different perspectives and track uh, what matters, measure what matters. MBOs, of course, uh, Hoshin Conry. Uh, we still see an awful lot of organizations in the world that uh, do it the old-fashioned way without uh, using some of these new uh, tools and frameworks. Uh, they literally will identify a set of goals. Uh, it's usually eight or 10 or sometimes 12. I call them goal buckets. And then they'll look at the programs and projects, services that they provide and start uh, putting them into buckets. And I have seen this uh, many times over the course of my career. When they get to the end of this process and there's some extra programs and projects that don't neatly fit in the buckets, uh, what do they do? Uh, simple, they create more buckets. So we end up essentially uh, trying to justify our existence through the selection of uh, a set of strategic uh, goal buckets. Uh, that doesn't work very well. It didn't work very well 20, 30 years ago, and it certainly doesn't work uh, well uh, well today. So uh, adopt a framework and uh, make, make use of a common language and then uh, get... Uh, get your performance uh, organization started using a framework. Uh, so strategy we identify as choices. We have to make choices to get from A to B, positioning choices, and then the strategic plan becomes the uh, the action, the high-level actions. Uh, we've written extensively about it in our book, The Institute Way, <clears throat> which lays out the, uh, the framework for the balanced scorecard. Uh, it's also been translated now into Arabic and uh, Vietnamese. So let's take a look on how these elements are logically connected and that'll lead us into strategic project management. Uh, at high altitude, we have customer and stakeholder needs. We have our mission, which is our purpose. We have our vision, which is a picture of the future. <clears throat> we have perspectives to help us understand strategy through different lenses or different dimensions. Uh, we have strategic themes and results or strategic goals, if you will strategic objectives and strategy maps as we're going down in altitude, KPIs, or performance measures and targets, and then finally strategic initiatives. We get to the uh, strategic projects that help close performance gaps in our strategy. Uh, probably the most important part of this uh, little graphic is the strategic objectives. If you get strategic objectives right uh, in an organization, what my experience is, things just go easier because there's a lot of things that we will tie to the strategic objectives to help make an organization more uh, higher performing. 
So if you're going to spend a lot of time uh, on uh, the front end, on the strategy development, uh, spend a lot of that uh, time in the strategic objective part. <clears throat> Initiatives and uh, KPIs, projects, are going to be linked to those strategic objectives. Uh, so strategic initiatives are those high-level, enterprise-wide strategic projects that are selected to close a performance gap within the strategic objectives. Uh, we'll form a portfolio of those projects that support the strategy and, uh, by connection, uh, the mission and vision of the organization. Measures are developed then, providing objective evidence of progress on achieving uh, results from the uh, uh, strategic objectives. Uh, we want to use KPIs to measure what's intended to be measured, and the reason we do that is to help inform decision-making. Uh, we also get a comparison that gauges the degree of performance change over time. So, again, reinforcing that strategic objectives are the, you know, literally the DNA of the high-performance organization uh, management system. <clears throat> when we get uh, to uh, aligning an organization, we don't do it through measures. We don't do it through initiatives. We will start with the objectives uh, at organization-wide level called Tier 1, and then cascade those down to the operating units, uh, departments, divisions, branches, uh, as uh, cascaded objectives, and then down to personal objectives for teams and individuals. And that way, we maintain strategic intent through all the levels of the organization. <clears throat> um, many organizations we have found have an awful lot of projects going on. Uh, we did some work in uh, uh, Dallas for uh, Susan Komen, the Breast Cancer uh, Foundation, and uh, when we arrived, they had uh, several hundred uh, projects all competing for research and development uh, money. It's very hard to say no to uh, projects that potentially uh, could uh, eradicate a, a disease. Uh, like uh, like breast cancer. So we um, are very interested in how can you narrow that list down to a, um, a high priority list, you know, an A list, if you will, and the B list and the C list. And one of the ways to do that is with uh, uh, filter the uh, initiatives, the candidate initiatives to get down to a, um, a prioritized a set of high priority ones. And when we do that, we can uh, identify special uh, dollars to go against those initiatives to ensure that they're funded as part of the budget formulation process. We would call that uh, Stratex, uh, strategy expenditure money, and that's different than operating OPEX and different than uh, investment uh, CAPEX dollars. So the color of the money uh, becomes important when we go to the budget formulation process. <clears throat> so to summarize up here on the strategy side, strategy drives the selection of initiatives uh, at the enterprise level and also projects at the operating level. So if we think of these uh, uh, enterprise-wide, corporate-wide initiatives that are cross-cutting, they have major impact. Uh, ERP system is, is by definition, a, a, a strategic initiative, enterprise-wide implications. But it doesn't have to be necessarily big projects like that. We've seen much uh, smaller projects, training programs where there was uh, serious uh, skill gaps in an organization become strategic. So it's not a hard and fast rule by the size of the project or the, uh, you know, the number of people it has or the resources and so on. It's very much about closing a performance gap that's identified uh, as part of the strategy development process. And we get to tier two to business units. Uh, those projects tend to be more uh, uh, business unit oriented. Sometimes they'll cross uh, two or three departments, but uh, they are not as uh, comprehensive and they're more aimed at uh, uh, solving uh, operational performance gaps. So with that, uh, I'll, uh, Wes, turn it over to you to talk a little bit about the second and third uh, imperatives, starting with uh, language and tools. Okay, thank you very much, Howard. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Um, when we talk about uh, a, a strategic project manager, um, as Howard mentioned, uh, there is a language. One of the gaps that we have uh, understood uh, over the years is that uh, the language itself does change. So 
when we look at language from a strategic perspective, we see words like mission, vision, values, uh, KPIs, targets, uh, strategy development, uh, those types of things, um, which uh, are not necessarily in the everyday vocabulary of the operational side of things or the delivery side. And when I speak to uh, the operational side, I'm referring to the project management side where we actually take those strategic initiatives and those imperatives and convert those into actionable deliverables. So looking at language of strategy, we see these types of words. When we look at uh, project management, we see a, a little different language. Uh, we see uh, words like risk and, and, and agile and project controls and schedule, budget, scope, uh, time, cost, uh, those types of things. And uh, just, just if you just uh, dissect the language uh, differential between um, the operational side and the strategy side, you can see that there's uh, already a, a gap in, in just the language. So one of the first things that, uh, that, that, that is relatively easy to control uh, in an organization is, uh, is making sure that that language is understood. So, uh, moving from the language, we're going to talk next about the uh, strategic project managements, the link, the strategy, and bridging that gap. So, how does an existing project manager become more strategic? Uh, one of the things that uh, we'll talk about in the course and go into to, to great detail, uh, as Howard has already mentioned, is, is making sure that we understand how to start with the end in mind. Um, as, as was mentioned earlier, uh, many, um, many times uh, in, in, in the business environment, we go from idea to delivery without stopping to think about how we're going to get this done, number one. Number two, the value associated with that and making sure it's aligned with the strategy so that we're doing the right things. So um, rather than just jumping right from idea to delivery, we're gonna, we're gonna try to uh, put together some, some ways for you to think about that. The next thing we're gonna look at is um, how to get from where you are now as a project manager, for example, where you're in the delivery mode in the war room and you're uh, fighting fires uh, every day and getting all the projects done to getting a seat at the table. How do I become more strategic thinking as a project delivery uh, person? So we're gonna look at um, uh, how do I get more strategic in my thought process so that I can get a seat at the table so that I'm uh, put in front of these types of projects a little bit sooner and I can participate in some of that strategy work. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is look at some of those linkages between strategy development and implementation, uh, between projects and portfolios, and the value associated with doing that, um, as well as aligning those uh, to, to strategy and, and understanding what that alignment means, uh, and having the ability to recognize uh, when projects are um, drifting off-center or away from the mean of the uh, strategic intent. The last thing we're going to do is, uh, is, is obviously is, is there is a gap. Uh, um, there is no question um, in, in my mind, certainly after uh, many years in project management and working in strategies, certainly with, uh, uh, from a, a strategic perspective, there's definitely a gap and we're going to try to close that gap and, and show you ways to become more efficient um, as a project manager uh, strategically and to, to get yourself more strategic thinking and get that seat at the table. So here's a, a nice little uh, a slide and, and by the way this has not been photoshopped this is an actual uh, picture uh, we probably won't be telling you where <laughs> it's from uh, but uh, <laughs> Uh, this is what happens when uh, when when uh, strategy is not everybody's job. Um, uh, this is an, an actual picture. It's not like I said, photoshopped. Uh, when when strategy is not understood all the way throughout the entire organization, these are the things that can happen. Now, in this case, 
Uh, luckily, um, it's not too much of a big deal, but we certainly don't want to put uh, assign our names uh, to this particular project. I don't think uh, when 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 we see this. So let's talk a minute about uh, uh, project management. I put this uh, this uh, uh, slide on here. Uh, it, this could be uh, any uh, project management process, methodology, um, uh, program, anything at all. But the, the idea behind this is that you must have some type of uh, program, some type of process uh, in order to deliver projects uh, with with a, uh, a goal in mind, so uh, I just put this one up. This is one that that, that we've done for for many organizations over the years. Uh, the good thing about this is that um, doesn't matter what uh, type of organization, doesn't matter what type of things you're doing. Um, this will um, this particular one you can apply to just about any organization any type of industry uh, it works well in oil and gas it works well in software it works well in in uh, the medical industry it doesn't really matter because you can take any of these uh, processes and based on your operating model can move them around uh, to fit how you deliver and what is important to you. The key and and the intent of the uh, the slide was to communicate that uh, having a process is is good and making sure that the process works for your particular business model and and delivery mechanism so that when you do bring in a strategic project, how do we take that project and plan it properly so it gets executed, delivered, and that the measurements that we put in place for those projects are realized. A little bit about the roles and responsibilities of strategic project managers. Let's talk about that just for a minute. The first one is uh, I'm up in the uh, upper left in the in the blue box where we contribute to strategic or strategy reviews. So. Um, as the as the project manager moves uh, upwards towards the strategy side, these are things that uh, that they need to look at and understand. How do they how do they get involved with strategic execution? How do they get into uh, strategic operational initiatives? How do they get involved with the goals and the target setting and 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 the reason behind that is, is because the, the more that the project manager understands the goals and what the true targets are of the project, uh, the higher the likelihood of success of those initiatives being executed within the organization. So that's the first thing. And then moving down into the, the green right side of the screen here, uh, when we start managing strategy execution, we have to start managing strategic resources. And when I say resources, yes, it is certainly um, uh, monetary or financial, but we also have to manage the the people, the equipment, and and other things that are um, that fall under the resource category. We have to manage uh, logistics. We need to monitor and report on our performance uh, so that we can do measurements, periodic measurements throughout the project and make sure that we are bringing things in on time and as expected. We have to manage and monitor our schedules and milestones. And I want to just stop for just a second and just talk about schedules and milestones uh, because that brings up maybe a question that might be in your mind um, that, and that is uh, how do I apply uh, strategy execution uh, very simply uh, and, I'm, and I'm used to a waterfall model but uh, does it work with agile well certainly it does um, as, as a certified scrum master and an agile certified practitioner I can tell you that the uh, agile framework works just as well uh, as the waterfall fall model or any other type of model that you might be using to deliver your strategic project. So uh, we're not just talking about one methodology of delivery. We're talking about any and all methodologies and and and, and getting comfortable using those 
uh, when we're delivering on strategy. And then, of course, culture uh, and employee dynamics uh, are going to play a role in this. And and, and this could mean uh, there might be a, a change in the particular culture and environment from which you're working, going from uh, just an execution um, uh, perspective to a strategic execution perspective. And, and just that one addition of a word uh, can actually generate some, 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 some different uh, uh, changes in the organization, organizational change or community transformation, I like to call it. So, so managing projects strategically. We look at projects and, and portfolios and, and how they're uh, managed strategically. We have to um, look at the prioritization of those projects. Are they aligned to our strategy? Are we going to use a, a PMO or an SMO? And what are those roles and responsibilities within the PMO or the SMO? Um, are we going to have common project prioritization rules? Uh, are we going to look at standing, standard operating procedures? Are we going to you know, go on using what we've been using? Or do we need to change the way we think, the way we approach, and the way we deliver projects? Because now we're thinking about things from a more strategic perspective. And that's a conversation that, that needs to take place early on. Uh, when we're developing our initiatives and we're setting our targets and we're defining what's going to be measured and how it's going to be measured and and we're coming up with our our uh, KPIs for our projects. So managing projects strategically is a different way of managing projects altogether. And 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 as Howard mentioned and and we all know we only have a short amount of time today. Uh, and that's why the course is three days long, because there's a lot of things to go through and a lot of detail behind all of these uh, simple paragraphs and statements that we're using uh, and analogies and visualizations to, to get into some of the details behind this and what does it actually mean? How do I implement it at my organization? What's the value of it for us? And if I'm not doing it, what's going to what's the, what's the consequences and and ultimately that's that's the key what what are the consequences if i don't do it so i want to go ahead and get to our uh, our summary here i would uh, i wanted to take and uh, sort of summarize uh, some of the things that we talked about today uh, and uh, and some of the uh, items that are in the course uh, that we'll uh, go over in detail. Um, so thinking about uh, strategic implementation and some of the actions that we have to take as a strategy or a strategic project manager, uh, certainly one of the things, and these are not listed uh, number one, two, three for a reason because they're all uh, of high value and, and of, of importance. So uh, certainly we start with uh, stakeholder influence uh, how do we maintain our, our stakeholder interaction? How do we maintain uh, stakeholder uh, participation uh, throughout the project life cycle, whether it's a, uh, a sprint uh, that we're working on for um, you know six weeks or, or whether it's a, uh, a multi-year um, power plant uh, that we're installing uh, that's going to, uh, you know, solve the uh, energy crisis for half of the country. So how do we maintain stakeholder influence? That's certainly something that we're going to look at and go into great detail. We're going to focus on critical initiatives. How do we decide what's a critical initiative? Uh, how do we focus on that? How do we make sure that we maintain that focus throughout the project life cycle? So we're going to look at that. Uh, communications. Um, communications has to change a little bit when we're talking about um, strategic project delivery. Uh, the, the clarity in communications um, helps us and we'll explain why it helps us and different ways to communicate. Uh, the value of communications within uh, an organization's uh, delivery mechanism uh, and certainly um, communicating at different levels within the organization, meaning uh, at the at the C-suite and all the way down to the, uh, as, as Howard mentioned, the strategy implementation level. Uh, 
How do we keep our uh, leaders or uh, executives uh, engaged throughout the project, uh, throughout the life cycle of those strategic initiatives, uh, why we need them to be engaged, how are we going to integrate change uh, within the organization? Uh, that, again, is back to my, my point earlier about uh, community transformation. I talked about one little thing about you know change, uh, but there's a lot of change that's going to take place when we start thinking about ourselves and looking at ourselves as a strategic project manager and an in important component uh, of our organization. We need to know the difference between strategy and activity. Um, and that's something that, uh, although it sounds simple, uh, many of us get caught up in uh, being uh, active, uh, but are we actually um, delivering strategy and actually delivering what we should be doing? Are we focusing on the right things? Are we delivering the right things? Are we looking at the right things? And if not, how do we stop ourselves and say, whoa, 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 we've been doing this for you know four weeks now and we're not getting anywhere. Is this the right thing to be doing? Understanding the difference in, in capacity and capability, um, uh, there is a difference, and we'll, we'll explain that in, uh, in detail. Identifying the benefits early, uh, making sure they're tangible, or making uh, identifying the tangible, and also identifying the intangible benefits. Um, uh, many times uh, there are intangible benefits to an organization that, have to, uh, that, that come out. Uh, of doing this, and uh, we'll talk about those and the value of those from, from an organizational perspective and from an individual's perspective, and what's the value of, of understanding this. Uh, create measurable benefits, we have to do that, of course. Uh, strategy delivery is just as important as strategy design. Um, so, so as you know, we, we look at strategy and we look at uh, de designing our own strategy or the organization's strategy, we have to make sure um, that we're spending uh, the, the appropriate amount of time in strategic delivery. And the value must not be lost in the deliverables or dates. Uh, we we got to make sure that we're not just simply um, what I like to call uh, feeding the software, uh, where um, we're making sure that we're you know loading our information into the software tables every day as we should, and we're just uh, working to dates and deliverables. We're actually looking at uh, the value of those projects and, and should they move forward. So continuing, there's a lot, lot to go, <laughs> a lot to do in the three days. So, so we use strategy to drive customer satisfaction. We all know the importance of that. What role does risk management play in strategy execution? Uh, risk uh, is gonna be uh, an important thing that we're gonna look at. Uh, we'll spend quite a bit of time on that. I think there's uh, four or five sections on, on risk management, risk uh, planning, uh, risk um, uh, execution, uh, and, and how do we mitigate some of that risk and, and different ways to do that. Keeping your organization agile, um, obviously in, in this day and age, um, we have to make sure that we're nimble, flexible, and agile enough to keep up, uh, not only with our competition, uh, but we're keeping up with technology and other things as well. Uh, we need to be people-driven or process-driven. That's what we need to decide. Uh, switching priorities without losing momentum. Uh, sometimes in this uh, fast-paced environment in which we work, uh, priorities change, but we can't lose momentum if it's a strategic initiative. So how do we do that? How do we make sure that we keep things going? Managing roadblocks, uh, removing roadblocks, that could say just as easily. Um, what are some ways that we can get that done? We'll talk about that in a couple of sections in the course. Adaptive governance for different delivery models. We're going to look at those uh, types of things and how do we change our governance model uh, for a del different delivery model. So this is really, does one size fit all? And uh, I would argue the answer is no. Develop meaningful performance measures. How do we make sure that what we're measuring uh, is meaningful? staying focused in that changing landscape and then linking performance to rewards. Uh, how, do we, how do we make sure that we're, we're, we are rewarding the right things uh, for, for performance? That should take us to our final summary. Howard, you wanna take the summary page? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I think the, uh, you know, what we wanna leave you with here is that 
there's a, a role for for both the project manager to uh, become more strategic, and a lot of them already are. Uh, but the other side of the uh, the coin is that the organization has to have uh, various things enabled uh, to be successful to get to high performance. Uh, it's not just uh, it's not just training project managers to to do something. It's an organization culture change in many cases to uh, to make that uh, make that move. Uh, but we have to start with a big picture, um, and this is hard for some folks. Uh, especially for some project managers, folks who are uh, primarily oriented around the, um, you know, around the project. So take a step back and uh, understand uh, the higher altitude uh, strategic elements, you know, themes and strategies and goals and that sort of thing, vision and mission, and uh, start there and then uh, work uh, work down rather than starting at uh, the project level and working up. Uh, <clears throat> strategic objectives are really the hook that makes uh, these management systems work, makes performance measurement work better, makes uh, initiative prioritization better. Uh, it gives us a thread, the common thread through the organization uh, that allows us to build out uh, high performance, uh, starting with those uh, strategic objectives. Um, we have to make sure we speak uh, clearly to each other. One of the things that uh, we have done in our training is to adopt a common language so that when you build out these uh, elements of uh, strategy and, and initiatives and so on, that uh, we're all talking about the same thing. Uh, we've been in organizations where at one level uh, goals mean one thing and at another level objectives mean the same thing as goals at the other uh, organization level. Uh, I can tell you that if uh, my goal is your objective and we've just starting, started uh, communicating, we already have a problem because we're speaking a different uh, different language. So spend some time uh, getting the language right. Uh, unfortunately, in our profession, the performance management world, there's not universal truth on what words mean. And uh, so this is a key, uh, uh, a key takeaway is to get the language understood so that leaders understand the project management language and project managers understand the uh, strategy, a little bit of the strategy language. <clears throat> uh, make sure you use a tool uh, to uh, organize your thinking around strategy and how you align projects uh, to that. Um, you know, we talked about the different approaches to uh, project management, and uh, that's an important uh, part of communicating uh, as well. Um, in uh, Agile, those uh, communications are much more frequent. Uh, than they are in uh, the waterfall approach, of course, or uh, hybrid approach. But um, it's uh, it's just important to get the language right. Uh, and then the, the important uh, linkages between strategy, projects, and portfolios. Um, make sure that you uh, use a common project prioritization approach. In many organizations, we've observed that uh, they'll use one priority uh, uh, framework at the corporate level and then something different at uh, the department level, and uh, even within the different departments, there may be differences in uh, how prioritization is handled. So uh, <clears throat> it's a case where uh, um, a, a single approach would make a lot of sense and make it simple for folks. Um, think about managing the projects uh, with the what are we trying to accomplish question uh, being uh, discussed uh, as frequently as whether the projects themselves are on track and from a schedule and from a resource adherence point of view. Just keep going back to that question periodically. Uh, how you organize, uh, critically important, whether it's a SMO, a strategic management office, a project management office, a PMO. We've seen many organizations that combine those. Now they have elements of uh, evaluation, elements of uh, project tracking and target setting. Uh, elements of, uh, of uh, project management, elements of uh, strategy tracking and monitoring in a single office. Um, <clears throat> of course, the uh, other option is not to uh, put together a, a single office for that and increase the uh, overhead associated with uh, staffing and running that office, but the functions of that office when you set, uh, when you set up your high performance uh, plan you know, make sure that you look at the roles and responsibilities and the governance and the 
structure. And you know, there isn't just one right answer for this. Uh, it really depends on the type of organization and the people in the organization. So just be flexible in your approach to that, but make sure the the elements of it are, are captured somewhere. Uh, and then finally, closing with the uh, strategy execution imperatives. Uh, we were only able to talk about uh, three of them today, operationalizing strategy, strategic project management, and a little bit about uh, the language and tools gap that exists between the two uh, camps, the east side and the west side. Uh, but there's other things that are uh, that are important also, and we'll uh, get to those in some uh, some later webinars. Um, <clears throat> I think it's uh, pretty clear that uh, becoming more strategic uh, is a good uh, career move, uh, not just for project managers, but uh, for other folks in an organization. And uh, uh, I know uh, as uh, we've attended various uh, project management institute meetings, uh, we've heard uh, many times over that uh, you know the goal for uh, project managers is to make sure they have an opportunity to contribute uh, to the C-suite conversations and and move up to the C-suite. Uh, so this is a, a clear uh, uh, motivating uh, a motivating incentive for uh, project managers to uh, to become more strategic and make a contribution in that area, help uh, the organization achieve uh, higher performance. I think we'll uh, close the technical part of this now and uh, open it up for uh, maybe a few minutes of questions. Uh, once again, if you want to sign up for the course, it'll be in Dubai and it's a three to five March. Uh, use the uh, discount code. Thank you for, to Informa for that. And uh, hopefully we will uh, see you there. Wes will be teaching the course and uh, I look forward to, uh, to hearing how well that uh, it has gone. Mega, any questions that we Great. can tackle? Yeah, yes, thank you very much, Wes and Howard. Uh, I will read out some of the questions that have come in. Let's try and answer as many as possible in a span of, say, 10 minutes. So the first question is from Abraham. Um, what is the role of a high leadership level in SPM and what leadership styles are relevant? Um, the role of a leadership in a high what? I'm sorry, I didn't get the, the rest of it. Mega? What is the role of a high leadership level in SPM? And what leadership styles are relevant? SPM, what is that? Uh, what does the acronym in, mean? Sir? As in the acronym for the course. The, the course. Our oh, PM, I'm sorry. I thought I, I, I heard SBM. Um, well, I mean, it's, uh, you know, Wes, uh, add in here, please. But, uh, uh, you know, the role of leaders is uh, is critical to this because it's um, it's not just dependent on the project manager adopting a more strategic view uh, of the world. It's, uh, it's leadership that creates a climate of uh, of transformation so that project management can be successful. I think the hardest part for leaders or one of the hardest that I've observed is the ability to say no and and saying no on the basis of some uh, factual analytical framework. And that's where prioritization of the initiatives becomes so important because we can um, level the playing field across competing initiatives for limited budget dollars. And uh, when I mentioned uh, the word uh, filter uh, in that initiative slide, that's where the leaders play a key role is identifying what the criteria are for selection so that projects move from, you know, one of 150 to, you know, number one through eight on the strategic initiative lists. Most strategic initiatives, when we end up with a balanced scorecard, for example, will have somewhere between half a dozen and a dozen what I call A-list initiatives. And that's as a result of, a, of leadership applying a prioritization filter and uh, uh, down selecting to get to the projects that matter the most. And then also using the framework to, you know, to unselect, right? Uh, you have to be able to say no. And one way to say no is by using that, uh, that filter. Wes, you have another thought on, on that question? Yeah, I would I would say uh, that that the role of leadership in 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 
in a strategic project uh, a format like this is to first of all uh, stay engaged second of all um, supportive obviously and 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 third um, making sure that they're available to remove uh, any roadblocks, um, uh, stoppages, slowdowns, whatever words you want to use uh, in in the course of the project, so that the project can continue and uh, momentum is maintained. So uh, I would say those things, those three things, are are certainly um, uh, uh, can be added to, and we can we could talk about that for, at length. But certainly those three things are uh, important from a leadership per perspective. Um, and, and that's what they should be doing. That's great, thank you. Thank you for that. Let's move on to the next question. Karen would like to know, instead of having project management and strategy terms, what about having one set of terms and how do you bridge this gap? I guess we, uh, you know, we started to set that up, didn't we, with the uh, difference between language and uh, tools. Uh, I'll share with you that uh, when we created that uh, those two slides uh, a month or two ago, we were uh, somewhat uh, taken aback by how many different words are used in uh, in each of the uh, each of the two camps. And uh, so, how do you bridge a, a language gap like that? Well, you have to be able to sit uh, at the same table, don't you, to have conversations around that. And understanding uh, takes uh, takes some time. Uh, what happens in a lot of organizations, so they don't take the time to uh, to work with each other because the levels are tend to be very different. You know, the C-suite uh, deal uh, deal with their issues and the project managers deal with their issues. So that's why we're encouraging uh, more coordination between the two different uh, camps, if you will, so that a, a common language can be uh, developed. You know, when I talk about a project, do I mean a strategic project or do I mean an operational project? Uh, if they're both aligned to strategy, does it matter? Maybe they're just, uh, you know, uh, supporting projects to our strategy. So I think there's a lot of work to be done here. I don't have a, I haven't solved that problem yet, but uh, I was somewhat uh, taken aback by all the different uh, terms that uh, the, uh, uh, the two sides uh, use to describe uh, what they what they do every day. Uh, yeah, I was going to say uh, just to add to that. I think uh, first of all, um, what 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 the question has done is validated um, what what Howard and I have believed for many years to be uh, a gap uh, in the business world is that there is a gap and and it's been recognized as a gap and um, uh, you know to, to to ask why isn't there one is is the question we asked. So um, that's why we felt compelled to put together this certification is to start to be able to talk to people, uh, share with them uh, the knowledge that we've accumulated over the years, the same things that, that we've seen within organization after organization, um, and, and then try to put together um, this type of a scenario, this type of a course, so that uh, we can then begin um, developing uh, uh, strategic project manager, so there is just one language. Um, so um, I, I thank you for the question, <laughs> uh, right. I, and I appreciate the validation. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add. I'll add one thing. I, I think this is going to be just as hard as it is at the at either of the levels. Where uh, just trying to get a common uh, use of, of words. Uh, I know we uh, did uh, a lot of work with the Association for Strategic Planning uh, when we wrote the body of knowledge uh, for the certification examinations there. And uh, just within the room, there were 24 of us uh, pioneers who wrote that. Just within the room, the difference in uh, in goal and objective and 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 strategy and even performance measurement uh, was uh, was notable. And uh, so it's going to take time to to find that uh, common language, if it's even possible. Frankly, I mean, look how long we've been doing this and on the uh, management on the strategy side of it, and we still don't have a universal set of. Uh, of words. So I think in, in the interim, what we can do is find ways to communicate with each other more frequently rather than uh, separate the project management from strategy development. Let's find some common ways to talk about the things that are important to both of them. Okay, great. Uh, let's take one last question, please. Um, Vasant would like to know, to manage a project strategically, 
does one have to be a specialist in the balance scorecard and project management? No, <laughs> no, not, not at all. Uh, that's why I showed a, a whole group of uh, models. Uh, you know, we, we happen to believe that the balance scorecard is uh, uh, a very uh, universal, uh, large uh, framework that you can do a lot of other things in. Project management uh, can fit within that. Baldridge can fit within that. Uh, EFQ can fit within that. So the balance scorecard is a, is a, is a very good framework and one that uh, is uh, successfully used uh, worldwide in all sorts of uh, different sectors and all different size organizations. But it certainly is not the only framework that you can use. I think what's more important is how you connect things. Uh, you know, we could call it the West Blakian framework. Uh, it, it's not so much what you call it, it's how you think about things and how you connect the different elements that exist at different altitudes to create, um, you know, literally a language in an organization that people will rally around and support so that everybody is talking about the same thing at the same altitude. So, um, you know, don't get hung up uh, on one framework. It's much more important about what the uh, components of that framework are and do they do they stand alone, but do they also connect? So many times we have seen strategic plans where there is no framework. There's a series of strategic goals and then there's some initiatives tied to them and then they just throw some performance measures in there. There's absolutely no connection between those things. It's like they're done by different uh, different people in different rooms and then just brought together in a slick looking report. So that's why strategic thinking matters uh, so much. Uh, and what we're trying to do as a company, as an institute, is to try and institute the <laughs> the concept of thinking about these things and then logically, logically connecting them so we can have clear communications about what we're trying to accomplish and then what are the projects and programs we're going to use to do that and how do we measure that success along the way and then make adjustments as we go so that we learn and grow. To add to that, uh, the, the, from the project side, uh, Prince2, um, you know, the Project Management Institute, uh, the international standards, ISO standards, agile, you, uh, hybrid waterfall, I can go on for 20 minutes. It, it really doesn't matter what uh, process you're using. Um, all I advocate is that you decide on a process and that you use a process, but you don't need to be an expert in any of those. Um, to do what we're trying to, uh, what we're sharing with you uh, today and uh, from the strategic side, uh, again, back to what Howard said and uh, uh, to, to, to close out with um, that, that you just need to have a common language, you just need to have a, a good understanding of what we're trying to accomplish, make sure that we have the executive support and, and we can move forward together. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we've, we're kind of running out of time now, um, but thanks a lot. If anyone else has any more questions, please feel free to email Informa or get in touch with Howard and we'll be all happy to help you. Uh, so yeah, we'd like to come to the end of this webinar. Thank you for listening in. We really hope you found this webinar informative and useful. Um, so yeah, like I said, get in touch with us if you have any questions. And as Wes and Howard mentioned, um, the next step to advance your learning is to attend the Strategic Project Manager SPM certification course coming up early next month. So we look forward to welcoming you at the course. Thank you, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you, Megan. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Yep. Thank you, thank everyone. You.